today. I've got a special guest for you today. You know him. We know him. We love having him here on Thursdays. Uh, Cliff Schechter. Cliff, how are you, my friend? If you can hear me, I'm doing well. Can you hear me? I can I can hear you loud and clear. Fucking technology, man. I got to be honest with you. I swear yeah. to God, just, just that I pushed myself to start this YouTube channel and buy all this new shit in yeah. my office and like the camera and then this, the, the, the video is working well. I think the image, the lighting is good right now. It's, it's great. I'm, it's that's great. great but, but I'm using this because my special like fucking mic that, you know, like transmits to my camera was not working. So I was, I recorded this whole video, you know, about, about Trump and his refusing to sign the Illinois pledge ripping the shit out of him. And then it was all like, <laughs> so no like, audio, I no like, audio. I'm going I'm to fucking swan dive out the window. So that's where I am. Right <laughs> now. Um, uh, you know, l listen, this is, this, this is the problem with being content creators. Sometimes it really is because you're trying to get the message out. Like I was talking about in the a block, the message is so important. Um, and and it, it's the most important thing in politics. It's the most important thing in elections is to get your message out, to have that narrative set and to set the narrative specifically so that you can drive home the win, right? Like that's the whole yeah. point. Uh, we see this last night with Chris Christie and uh, we, we see it with the absence of Vivek Ramadama Ding Dong. And then we see Nikki Haley, who is not going to win um, the election. I don't know why people keep saying she's going to. And then, and then we, and then we have Ron DeSantis, the poop map Ron, who is definitely not not going to win the election either. Um, but there's this whole saga and this whole narrative. And Chris Christie really tried to set the narrative last night. I don't know if you noticed that. Do you think that's a plant, the, the Chris Christie off mic, where he said that that Nikki Haley is is doesn't have a shot and Ron DeSantis is petrified? You think that's a plant? I thought I thought it was a plant. I know your microphone it's wasn't plant. working, but I think he knew his was, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, oh, you, you're, you're, oh, that he said that and it got caught. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I think it's a hot mic plan. I, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I don't, is, I, is 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 a relatively evil human being. Mm -hmm. we'll relatively, people. well, you're you're being easy on him. I think. Well, I am because I, it, these days there's a sliding sort of reverse evolutionary scale, like that poster that shows us going from dragging our knuckles to walking. <laughs> right, it's backwards in the Republican <laughs> Party now. So you have to place Christie <laughs> along a continuum. If it was just like See, American wait, you mean they got that we got the 2016 and MAGA's like, let's go back. No, 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 we're way too evolved. We need to right. we need to go back. <laughs> what I'm saying is Christie, like circa 2013, was one of the worst pieces of shit in the world. But the Republican Party has come up since then with Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert and Mike Johnson and Donald Trump. And you know, you go through the whole list and you're like, Yeah, now Christie's only somewhere in the middle. You know, so like, so, so he didn't change. They change is what you're is oh, what you're absolutely. is what you're saying. It's the same thing with Mitt Romney. The same thing with Liz Cheney. Like you know, we've had our conversations about them. Right. They seem better because of all these fuckers who got so much worse. They're still the same callous conservative. They'll cut your health care. They get rid of your social security. They'll go to war. They'll do this. They'll do that. But I told you why I'm pulling for them because to me, in the end, democracy is the most important thing. And so, do I love? That Chris Christie's like message that he got up on that stage for so long and just delivered a message about how Trump's a criminal and Trump's evil. Yes, I am. And that Vivek Ramaswamy is basically programmed by the Kremlin. Absolutely. Ramaswamy, Ramaswamy. I thought it was Ramadama Ding Dong. That's, That's what, what I, I called him. But I, I think oh, he was, okay. I was being racist or something. I I just thought I, I took a name that sounded like something funny. I don't know. I, I, okay. I, I well I you know Ramadama Ding Dong. I just like it because. He's a ding dong. He's a ding dong. Right. Like, like I, I make fun of Ron DeSantis's name all the time for various things. De Sanctimonious. Right? De Sanctimonious. Well, I mean, if you could come up with the worst, <laughs> stupidest name from DeSantis, that would be it. Like only Donald Trump, <laughs> you know? I mean, I call him the Shardis and, you know, and things right. like that is what we, I would do. We but like poop map Ron here. We've, well, meatball is good. He did, Don, I got to give Don. That credit. was good because meatball he looks like good. a meatball. Right. He well, he like acts like a meatball because meatball isn't like alive or, you know, have human attributes really. And he does not either. No, you know, he's sort of like, hi, people. I yeah, belong I on you. spaghetti. I belong on uh -huh. spaghetti. I wish I was a sandwich. I wish yeah. I was a sandwich. Child should not eat sugar. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, it's really you know, weird. The, the, he's fucking such a strange person. But but in the end, I'm glad that, that that as much as I can criticize and will always 
that I will never, you know, for a lot of things Chris Christie did. A lot of people don't even know that as a federal prosecutor, of which every state has federal prosecutors, Chris Christie, when he was a federal prosecutor, ran up the largest freaking bill staying at like five star hotels, like ridiculous places. And and I mean, so don't think for a second that I don't think that Chris Christie's a grifting, scummy Republican like so many of them. But we needed somebody with credibility within that group of crazy people to get up on that stage and say the stuff he was saying about Trump being a criminal. So I'm really glad that for a long time he did that. And I'm glad they gave that speech last night because I do think, look, man, between him and Cheney and Kinzinger and Romney and whoever the hell else, if we peel off a couple percent in Georgia and Arizona and places like that, that can be enough. So, you know, I'll fucking take well, it. Well, I, I have a few disagreements with you there, but I don't want to get you too, know that. too deep we've into had the that, We've had that debate. Right. We don't like, want to get too, we not, don't want to get too deep into some of those small disagreements. Time. I'll but here's, come to fucking but, Missouri and punch you out. That's right. We can, bomb, we can, we can do, that's what we do is like a... We I'll do, do like a shot of Jaeger too, and we'll keep doing a shot of Jaeger and then trying to punch each other. It'll right. be like that Indiana Jones scene almost at the beginning to the you're, point you're where you're gonna lose. You're gonna lose. If, I know. If I we're am. doing Jaeger. If I we're doing Jaeger, you you're gonna lose. In college, <laughs> I would kick your ass. But I am a weak, middle-aged suburban no, 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 dad. It has nothing to do with your age or anything like that. I'm I'm talking about the Jaeger. If we're gonna do Jaeger first before we're fighting, you're totally fucked. Because like okay, Jaeger's that may be like, true. Jaeger's but, like my fuel. Jaeger's my well, I'm fear. making the point that it doesn't have to do with age with everybody, <laughs> but it does with me. I have I have uh, lost a lot of, of my drinking ability with uh, with my age. There's just no getting around it. So let's but, let's play a bit of this Chris Christie clip here. Um, here's a bit um, from his speech that he was giving last night. Now, uh, for people who aren't aware, there was a debate last night. It was only Nikki Haley and and Poop Matt Ron on the stage at the time of the debate. Because, yeah, can I ask you something in all seriousness? Because yeah. mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I didn't even know because I just was like, I'm not paying attention to this stupid debate. Did, did Ramaswamy's numbers fall too low? Like, why was he not on there? Well, so Ramadama Ding Dong, um, I think that's, no, that's how you say his, my name correctly. I thought that's how you say his name. I mean, he, everyone always gets his name wrong. I think I'm getting it right. So Ramadama Ding Dong, what I believe from the very beginning, I actually listened to him speak. I was in a space, a Twitter space, Mario in the Falls Twitter space. I was on stage, I believe, or I was getting ready to be on stage. And Vivek Ramadama Ding Dong comes into the Twitter space and he actually... He actually started talking and he was in a car, you could tell. And he was talking was that about the one how he's, where, he, where he started peeing and he left his mind. No, 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 no. This was this was months gun? and months and months ago. Awesome. Right. This is this is when he first announced okay. and no one knew who the fuck he was, right? That's my other than a bunch of crypt, I want to crypto say bros. That 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 if he were a real candidate, kind of like tr with Trump, it's the poop and the smell stuff. If Vivek ever became a real candidate, I would honestly make ads where I would just play the P tape over him talking. <laughs> urinating. That is honestly what I would. Have do. you ever? Have you ever heard? Well, have you ever heard of uh, Adam Sandler's longest pee in the world? Have you ever heard that? Yes. Oh my God, it's hilarious. That's what it just reminded me of. That it'd be just a commercial of him talking, right. and then just this pee sound, just the pee well, you sound. Remember, you saw Naked Gun, right? Where he goes in the bathroom, the Queen of England, you know, is is there, and they're talking about like you know the thing, and Frank Drebin, and he goes in, and he's even like. He's, he's do, even doing like he's peeing quickly. He's making noises. He starts singing to himself. And at one point, he like does a big yawn while he's peeing and he farts. And like, I mean, just, <laughs> it is hilarious. Scrape, scrape slapstick comedy. You can't you can't yes. go wrong with it. No. Um, but but here's the thing about Vivek is I listened to Vivek when he first came on the scene, and my immediate reaction, like my immediate reaction, is I text Gabe Sanchez, my co-host at the time, mm -hmm. and he was. He was he was either on stage two or he was listening to Mario Nafal that 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 and I text him I said holy shit this guy's a Trump plant and he's and we had a discussion from the very beginning Ramadama Ding Dong has always been a Trump plant I'm going to show you a video also well um, you know his it. you know his sponsor right uh well I mean he's he claims to have a lot of little sponsors okay. but who's his but big the sponsor? big guy behind him mm -hmm. he comes from the same sort of, I know this being in Ohio, Ohio background, um, venture capitalist that moved out West connections as J.D. Vance. And just like Peter Thiel was, it was the guy who literally elected J.D. Vance, gave him $30 million in this state so that he could 
take a, a at the time he was pretty close to tied with Tim Ryan and won by a couple points. He's also behind Vivek. They are like he wants to place he he lost the one in Arizona with Blake Masters. He wants to place his little acolytes everywhere. So the reason why you know that he's a Trump op, as you said, and probably more likely a Putin op, because Peter Thiel has so many interests that, that intertwine with Putin's, is that Peter Thiel is a huge Trump supporter. So the way so JD Vance was sent there to to be a be a, a, a you know a nationalist anti-Ukraine, you know, anti-vax, lunatic Trump supporter, and he won. And now they were trying the same thing with Vivek. And I could think the thought was that he would push back against DeSantis and Haley, as you're saying, and others serve his serve his duty, so to speak, and then walk away. Well, and I actually believe the reason why Vivek didn't appear on the stage this time is because he tried to make a point where he's like, hey, if if Trump's going to come off ballots, then we should protest and come off ballots. That way people can't vote for us. And also we shouldn't debate. So we shouldn't participate in the process. So Trump wins. Like and the thing is, does he give a reason? I guess what I'm, I'm not trying to interrupt you, but I'm wondering, like, was there a reason given? Because I'm not aware of any why he wasn't there. Well, he gives six different reasons because he's a lying piece of shit. But but I'm going to show you a clip okay. of I'm going to show you a clip of what uh, what he says about um, Nikki Haley and stuff. And that might give some insight into it of him on his on his Twitter account. But here's the thing is that my view of it from the very beginning is Vivek. It was it was a Trump op. I call it a Trump plant and, and, and plant it into the into the uh, into the. Uh, the the primary election. Look, look, dude, we're agreeing on something today. Right? No, absolutely, absolutely. But here's the thing: is I think the reason why is because Trump and Trump's campaign were terrified that DeSantis would actually court the crypto bros, and that and that um, and, and Trump could not court the crypto bros very well because even though crypto bros kind of smell like QAnon, it's not the same thing. It is not the same people. It is not the same thing. So what you, the crypto bros actually think the QAnon people are nut jobs. They're fucking toothless rednecks who are, who, who are the pores, right? The crypto bros either view themselves as elite or rich or want to be elite and rich. And that's what Vivek could deliver. He could deliver Trump, the crypto bros, because what he could do is he, Vivek could stand on stage. He'd be like, Oh, you want a president that you can do vote for for this, 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 and this? Great. I'm Vivek Ramadam Ding Dong. Vote yeah. for Trump. Can I take it even a step further than what you're saying? Yeah, go ahead. So there's multiple purposes. Again, one is to serve his master, Peter Thiel, who is a, a billionaire, loser, weirdo, who wants to live forever and is spending all of his money on trying to figure out how he literally – it's like the Bond people took a villain and made them real. And it was that fucking weirdo. Okay. So he he's behind all these venture capital type guys and Vivek is one of them. So he's there as a, as a Thiel plan, right? To get Thiel's message out there. And that, again, they want to pull out of Ukraine. They want to empower Putin. They want to do all this stuff. That's one. Two, as you said, crypto bros and I think other big business types that are scared by the instability caused by Trump. So you give them a break and he pulls them away from DeSantis and then he makes it okay for them. He's like a bridge to bring them back. Exactly. And then three, what else is he? Oh, shocking. He's Indian. Is there somebody else Indian who was posing a, a threat in that race? Right. He's Indian. So for people that were supporting Nikki Haley, you know, who want to be like, I'm a Republican. I'm not racist. Look, I can support Nikki Haley, you know, and, and we're flirting with supporting her early on. Vivek tries to take some of them away and is the bridge to some of them going to Trump. I think he was a multi-purpose plant is what I think. Yeah, absolutely. Well, here, here he is. This is, I believe this is yesterday um, that he says this after Chris Christie actually drops out. But let's listen to what Ramadan and Ding Dong says, what his, what his idea. And he still has the Beavis up. haircut. I just, yeah. I don't get hey, it. Hey, hey, easy, easy on the Beavis haircut. I have been That is not a Beavis haircut, look, dude. Look. Yours is spiked and cool. <laughs> his is a fucking pompadour. <laughs> From 1952. Okay. Let's watch. Let's let's watch Ramadan and Ding Dong here. Give us his reason why Christie dropped out. The system wants to narrow this down to a two horse race between Donald Trump and a puppet who they can control, and it has become increasingly clear that puppet is not a Democrat. It's not even Gavin Newsom. It's Nikki Haley. It's in our own party. <laughs> well, today one more step in that plot unfolds. Chris Christie drops out. Next up, I'm going to make a prediction. You're actually going to see Ron DeSantis join Nikki Haley's ticket. 
He's going to be her VP. The whole game, it's hiding in plain sight, whatever it takes. And this system will stop at nothing. And I mean nothing to eliminate Donald Trump from contention. <laughs> like, like, hi, I'm Vivek Ramad, Ramadama Ding Dong. Please vote for Donald Trump. He even, I'm surprised he even he has actually, the Donald Trump voice kind of going, doesn't he? I, I'm surprised he wasn't actually getting up from delivering Trump a blowjob when he actually said all of that. <laughs> Maybe that's all what right. he was in the car. Maybe that's what he, he was doing he, in the car. He, he was so like so grateful to Trump. I mean, the, those kinds of things make it so obvious and and it's always been obvious he's always again from the anti-vax stuff to the the anti-ukraine pro-putin stuff he took the same exact positions on all issues that separate the republican party um he took all the maga positions that could then deliver bring some people over as we right. said from just and then deliver them make them palatable because trump Maybe they've been pushed away from Trump because they've seen him like, you know, you know, 91 hey, indictments. The crazies, the crazies, the crazies, right? That's all over Truth Social that ends up making cable news and the whatever. And he makes it OK because, of course, he's 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 going to drop out and endorse Trump. He makes it OK for them to go back uh, to to Donald Trump. You know, whether he'll succeed at that is a whole different story. But that's what. His whole, you know, I mean, and and he's probably also hoping he'll be treasury secretary or something. Or vice secretary. president. Now, I want to talk to you about the vice presidential thing, because I actually have an idea of what Donald Trump, because he actually, he kind of talked about this last night about who his vice president is going to be in his little town hall. But first, let's go to this town hall. This is Chris Christie last night telling his supporters that he's going to be dropping out of the race. My goal has never been to be just a voice against the hate and the division and the selfishness of what our party has become under Donald Trump. It's also been to win the nomination and defeat Joe Biden and restore our party and our country to a new place of hope and optimism in this country. I've always said that if there came a point in time in this race where I couldn't see a path to accomplishing that goal, that I would get out. And it's clear to me tonight that there isn't a path for me to win the nomination, which is why I'm suspending my campaign tonight for president of the United States. All right, there you go. There's a little taste of it, um, of Chris, Chris Christie telling his supporters there in, in New Hampshire, where he has campaigned to be president of New Hampshire, I want to point out. Um, he has Wasn't not campaigned he in the other state. doing, okay, I mean, I could be wrong, but like, it's interesting to me because he was out polling. Um, he was out polling Vivek, obviously the other losers in there. And I felt like at least in something I saw, and again, who can trust a lot of these polls? So maybe it, whatever, but I felt like he, even DeSantis was losing and he was gaining. I, I thought he was becoming maybe one of the, I, I still didn't think he was going to win. Don't get me wrong. But I thought he was becoming, he had like Haley, sort of one of the two alternatives to Trump. So I was actually surprised that he dropped out before any of the voting even started, especially considering in New Hampshire, independents can vote, they can choose and vote in the Republican primary if they want. So, I was very, I was very surprised too um, that he dropped that. Honestly, I thought I thought Chris Christie would stay until the very end because New Jersey is one of the last states to vote in a primary. Right, and as long as the money kept him in the race, people kept donating money to Christie to punch on Trump. I believe he would stay in. But I actually think, especially if you're trying the moderate lane, right? If that's your kind of. I mean, that's what you're running as. I'm not saying mm -hmm. he really is one, right? But that's you sort of well, the way on, you're portraying on, in, yourself. in that primary, he is he is he's the... portraying himself, right? So if that's what you're doing, you know, that was John McCain's strategy, where he ended up beating Bush, and you know, and obviously eventually Bush came back and all the other stuff. But that you know, and I'm not saying it's a winning one overall, but it does give you a chance in New Hampshire where independents can vote. I'm surprised he didn't wait at least till the voting in New Hampshire is done, is what I'm saying. Well, um, I, I agree. I agree to some extent to that. But here's what I here's what I disagree on, because I actually think Chris Christie and I've said this. Since you're going to fucking disagree with me again. This a absolutely. Show? Absolutely. All the time. I, I just fucking I just Ozarks. I, I'm telling you, man, I just I, I just got to I just got to do it. I, I got to dissent. I don't I don't ever 
you know, just say, yeah, you're the I'm Jason sure, Bateman right. character, aren't right? You? Right, I am, I am, right? Yes, yes, you're right, Cliff. Everything you're saying is right, and this is this is my show, and I'm supposed to have opinions, but I don't have opinions because I'm just supposed to say you're right. Here's here's, here's what I'll say. The show, here's the show. In life, if anybody ever said I would write about anything, they immediately should be killed or something right. should be done because they're so stupid that they really, honestly, should not be able to to, to walk around freely. I am wrong. I'd say about three quarters of the time, right? Maybe four fifths. Uh, so we're in there. You you, know, you put your pants the time, on the correct way, though. You put your pants yes, on the correct way. And the rest okay, of the good. time, all right, the, well. the other 20, 25% of the time, I am damn fucking right. Oh, okay. So you're spot on. Well, I yeah. mean, I've got a little better record than that. I don't want to pat myself on the back or anything, but, you know, I've got a little better record than that. But here's the thing I think the audience likes having you on because we do have this back and forth. We do disagree on little things and we're. We're not, we're willing to admit it and to talk about it because here's what I disagree with on, with the Chris Christie thing. And, and really it's more about what my, what my idea is that Chris Christie's motivations are. I actually believe Chris Christie's motivation is to keep him relevant to 2028 because I think Chris Christie sees that Gavin Newsom is probably the likely nominee um, that could come out of 2028. And I think Chris Christie wants that fight because boy, I actually, I actually think it would be good for our country to watch a Republican Chris Christie and a Democrat Gavin Newsom just fucking just pound heads uh, about policy and about what's right and what's American and what's not. And I, I think it would be good for the country to have that conversation and that and that discourse inside of our politics and our social. Yeah. Well, you I, know I, think what? It would. I hate to disappoint you, but I agree. Um, <laughs> I, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure what you were disagreeing with me. I was only talking about how he surprised he got out and didn't stay in until New Hampshire. Well, his mo his motives, his motives is. But, I, but, I, but I actually, I actually don't think he's... for running. Absolutely, I believe it's about twenty. It's the same thing with Nikki Haley. It's the same thing with I believe it's about twenty twenty eight. I'm glad. I'm glad I pulled you over to my side then. <laughs> yeah, you, you're so, <laughs> that's so easy. Man. It's so easy. So it's so easy. So easy. No, I well, mean, I just the only thing I was questioning was why he didn't at least stick in until New Hampshire. Because if something shocking happened and he was able to, like, let's say, come in second behind Nikki, Nikki uh, behind Trump, and you know, or something like that, and beat Nikki Haley, that would set him up and make him look even better. For well, and here's here's what I'll here's what I'll say about that is my belief is on that 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 Chris Christie um, does not want to have a loss because he would not be able to uh, be a viable candidate in 2028 if he went Maybe. into that primary and Remember got his ass smoked. Expectations the media places right. expectations game, and if you outdo expectations, they consider you a winner even if you don't win. So well, I, right, you know, I, whatever it doesn't matter in the end. I, like like why he got out, and we agree. I think most of the, the only one who I think ran uh, and thought he had a shot at winning was DeSantis originally because he didn't like spend an hour listening to himself and realizing that, uh, that he's the bore, most boring motherfucker on earth. And that like, you know, if we wanted to sort of uh, if we wanted to sort of cut down and call the human race, we would have Ron DeSantis just walk into people's bedrooms and talk to them and they would get so out of in that in that what he wants we, to do. <laughs> and we wouldn't reproduce. He does want to do that. So maybe if we want to, people, but I think we have to target who we don't want to reproduce and send right. Ron DeSantis there. My point being, he, when he got in, thought he had a chance. I don't think any of these other people did, as you said. Do you, think, think, do you think he had a chance when he got in? Ron DeSantis, do you think he had a chance when he got in? I did not think he had a chance. I thought maybe somebody did, but I'd seen his personality and was sort of like, how is this guy going to attract people? No, uh, you I, know, I, I was way. looking to see if somebody else who had more personality, although that's hard to find in the Republican Party. I don't know who that is, would do it. But, but I, I mean, I, when it's when it's a box of salting crackers over there, it's hard to get them to be interesting. You know what I mean? Right. So he, to me, did not, uh, you know, in any case, he ran because of that. The guy from North Dakota, I just think, was so bored in North Dakota. He's like, who? What the fuck's like, who? Yeah. Who? Remember the governor? I don't even know his who? I don't, honestly don't know his name. Right. Exactly. Um, he's like, I'm tired of hearing at oil rigs today. I think I'll just fucking get in the race because why right. not? Ask, um, and, Asa Hutchinson, Asa, as I call him, Asa Hutchinson of Arkansas, the right. former governor. He was right. the same way. Tim Scott, you know, same way. Mike oh, Pence. Right. Tim have Scott you, ran. See, have you heard? Have you heard of the guy Mike Pence? He dropped out too. Mike Pence did. Have you ever heard of that guy? You might remember, but Tim Scott. It's not fair. His girlfriend and or the many of them in the Niagara Falls area called him up there to come <laughs> visit. And so he didn't have time to campaign and spend time with his many girlfriends uh, in Canada. Girlfriends, you know. Girl, right. right. Girl, girl friends. friends. 
girlfriend right, so, girlfriend listen girlfriend so i get why tim scott got out of the race right I, no i mean Absolutely. i don't i don't really believe i think he was running to be trump's vp he's like trump's gonna need a moderate sounding black guy from the south um i, I nobody else do who I has lots that, of girlfriends who has lots of girlfriends right. Who's going to bring the hotties from Canada? Right, home. exactly. I don't. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't think that, that. I think it was just DeSantis and a couple other people who wanted to be VP, and then the 2028 crew, I believe, are, are Nikki Haley and and Christie, who were always running for 2028. Well, let's listen to Chris Christie here because I think that's interesting that you say that. Just as I pull uh, the the hot mic audio from Chris Christie last night before he went on stage, where he's talking about Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis. Let's listen. People don't want to hear it, Wayne. They don't want to hear it. We know we're right, but they don't want to hear it. Right. And and there's you know we couldn't have been any clearer. Right. We couldn't have been any more any more direct or worked any harder. So, and you know. Forget, yeah. Well, when you give land to China and places like that. Yeah, that's gonna, what you get. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, she spent sixty-eight million so far just on TV. Spent sixty-eight million so far. Fifty-nine million by DeSantis. And we spent 12. I mean, who's punching above their weight and who's getting a return on their investment, you know? And she's going to get smoked. And you and I both know it. She's not up to this. She hasn't even been. Yeah. She's still 20 points behind Trump in New Hampshire, right? Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And he's going to, he's still going to carry out, right? Yes. Oh, he's, I, you know, I talked to De DeSantis called me, petrified but that but I would. He's probably getting out of half of Iowa. Well, so there you go. And I think that was, wait, I think that what was. What did he say there? I didn't. I, I think you're right. At the, um, at, at the end, at the end about the DeSantis, DeSantis part. Yeah, he said he's petrified, and then he was kind of cut off about. Well, DeSantis so we, is not going to go on a past Iowa. Um, so we don't now, know what DeSantis is petrified well, of. But DeSantis was actually besides, on Morning Joe this besides, morning. Besides, you know, personality, cleanliness, looking not like a meatball. Running your right. state in a way that you don't kill everybody from COVID. Making sure your your skin suit doesn't fall off your Android exactly. body. Learning how to actually put a COVID mask on without putting it on fucking <laughs> upside down and sideways like it's a diaper. The boots, the boots too. I mean, yeah. no matter if you're wearing walking white rubber boots in, or high heel boots. Around in non high heels, I know he's terrified of all of that. Right. I wasn't aware that he was also. In any case, I, I just was interested, but it didn't go that far. And, and here's the thing. Um, w whether he leaked that on purpose or not, and I, I, I do think he, Chris Christie's a say what you want about he's him. A master also, also, he's a master. He's a master politician. Very smart. Yes, he is. Yeah, he's a very smart politician. You don't win as a Republican in New Jersey unless you're a smart politician. And and um, I think what he was saying about Nikki Haley was right on. Like when you, she's on those stages, and some of it may be sexism, sexism. Some of it may be that she doesn't have the confidence because she's a woman and there's all these screaming men on there. And I get that, but whatever it is, she disappears on those stages. She doesn't have, she does not show strength. She does not show like, she's just gonna, he, she, like the way he put it, she's just going to get eaten up. She's going to get destroyed. I think exactly that's right. If there at any moment it's her on a stage with Donald Trump, he will so fucking, he will defenestrate her. He will eviscerate her. He will chop her into little pieces and feed her to the sharks, which, you know, he liked to watch Shark Week with with uh, Stormy Daniels. So, you know, that's there's he could always do it during Shark Week with a porn star. Right. Well, and Nikki Haley, if you look at the schedule, even if she pulls out New Hampshire, which she won't, she will not win New Hampshire. Um, everyone's like, no, oh, now that Chris Christie's out, all those votes go to go go to Nikki Haley. I'm like, you don't understand how primaries work. Even if they go to Haley, it's still the same amount for Trump. And that's not how vote splits work. There are Christie yeah. voters who are, are going, going to go, go to vote for Trump. Well, but there, some of them are going to go to Trump too. I know that feels like it's not real, yep. but they will. There they is will. a small percentage, uh, maybe people under twelve percent. Emotion. That's right. I mean, people don't get how much of this is about people voting on emotion. And even if it's even, let's say you know, let's say that Christie has ten or twelve percent or whatever he has. Even if just a couple of those percent go to Trump, which they will. And, and you'll still see a split in a few of them, you know, four or whatever percent will go to DeSantis, even if she gets the lion's share of it or not lion's share, but majority. Let's say she takes six points from him. That's not enough. Like It's not right. doing anything. And, right. and again, people forget. I know she's from South Carolina and I know that that she was governor of South Carolina. But Jesus Christ, do people forget? You know, I know this. I wrote a book on John McCain. He won in New Hampshire. And then by the time he got down to South Carolina, he had a black love child 
And he, he you know, they turned him into somebody who, had, who, was, who was a Manchurian candidate who'd been a prisoner of war in Vietnam and shared our secrets. There was an old operation set up by the, the late Lee Atwater, that piece of shit in South Carolina to do this kind of stuff. And if you don't think that they're going to turn Nikki Haley into all sorts of things, they'll look at her record on the UN when she was, she, when she was actually serving under Trump, find ways that she sold us out to other countries. I'm sure there'll be done countries with non-white you, people. You, in them. you want me to tell you what they're actually, how, the, how they'll, how and they'll then there's make sure the sexism thing too. They're going to destroy her. Do you want you want do you want me to tell you the one the one thing that will destroy her in South Carolina in the Republican primary? She took the Confederate battle flag out, off the Capitol grounds. Yep. And remember, that's that the one thing John she's McCain not Confederate. Too. She's not Confederate, and right. that's enough. And she will lose. She will lose in a Republican primary in South Carolina because she took that Confederate battle flag down off the Capitol grounds. Yeah, right. They're gonna they're Period. gonna destroy her with that. That was funny. Some shit fell down in my office. Sorry. Um, they're gonna they're gonna destroy her on that. They're gonna destroy her. Remember, there were those rumors or some right wing blogger who claimed he had an affair with her, and that was out there for a while. You don't think the Trump people are gonna play that because with the with the sexism being where it is, Trump can can hump a glory hole, which I'm sure he does just about every other day. But if she had had so hooked up with some blogger, she's a slut and a whore and a you know in a Republican primary, they're gonna pull that out everything about her and just remember everybody's like marco rubio will be doing fine once we get to florida and then <laughs> wait 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 marco rubio's home state is florida who won when marco rubio got to florida in the primary was it That's him or was point. it someone else what who it was, was it? By, it was somebody else and it was somebody else by 25 points and right that's it, why I'm saying, know, it was it was this guy it was this guy right. who won. it was this guy. that's why i'm saying she's gonna lose and she may lose big in her home state and, and, and that'll be devastating. It's over. And and it doesn't matter what happens in New Hampshire. They can't, she can't come back from a loss in South Carolina. She just no. won't do it. Not a Republican primary. And that's the point is a lot of people aren't understanding the primary process, the primary election, the schedule. It's, it's the same thing as people thinking someone was going to uh, uh, somehow a, a primary Joe Biden in a Democratic primary and incumbent president. I'm like, well, you clearly don't understand how the Democratic part primaries work. Um, there, you're never, well, you're, you're, you're never going to be able to challenge it of, of an incumbent president. You're not who, scared about from Marianne Williamson. I'm who hiding who? under my desk half the time. Who Marianne? Well, who? <laughs> I only know. I only know her because I went to her and asked her to take out her jewel necklace and predict my future. Oh, okay. Which she does. Well, let's see if she can predict the future on this one, because this is where Donald Trump, he's talking about Chris Christie. He's talking about his vice presidential. He was on Fox News last night, uh, lying, of course, just puking up lie after lie after lie and saying all kinds of word salad. I want to show you part of it. But this part specifically talks Did about you say the vice pooping president. up or puking up, puking, puking up. Uh, I mean, he, he probably was he, he pooping, poops. too. Yeah. And I just want to be clear that that happens. Yeah, well, it, it does. It, it does a lot. It looks like he's uh, having he's holding a full diaper here. But here's the point I want to make is that a lot of people talk about uh, Nikki Haley and that she might be trying to be vice president. A cliff. I'm going to say it right here on the Tony Michaels podcast is January 11th. I think I've said this before, but I'm going to say it to you and I'm going to ask you the question here soon. And we're going to talk about it. I think that Donald Trump is not going to pick a vice president to running me. I don't think he's going to pick a vice president to run. And a lot of people are like, you can't do that. I'm like, yeah, I, I get it. You also can't try to overthrow the government. Right. You also can't steal right. secrets. Exactly. Long right. list you of can't do any of this stuff. Right. right, right. But but the thing is, is that the reason why I say it and the reason why I want to talk about it, because I think it's very important in our narrative going forward, is that why would a dictator have a vice dictator? That doesn't make any uh. sense to me. A dictator, a, 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 a theocratic monarchy doesn't have a vice dictator. They have their son. They have their family. That that's how it works in a theocratic monarchy. That's how it. That's how a king works. That's how a dictator works. Is is they get to pass it on to their dictatorial family. Their their yeah. Their ancestor, that's right, right, right. Your your kids are the next in line. Right, exactly. Like but but let's listen brilliant, here. Brilliant business that did so well. Well, let's listen to Grandpa Poopy Pants, Grandpa Hitler here, Grandpa Swatter, Grandpa Bomb Threat here. These nicknames are just easy with this guy. Oh, Grandpa, you and you just, right. Okay, so let's listen to uh, Grandpa Bomb Threat here, and let's listen to what he says about his vice president when he's questioned about it. Let's listen. Let me just ask you a follow-up on that about who would be in your in your cabinet, in your administration. Mm -hmm. 
if you are the nominee, which I know you expect to be, who would be in the running for a vice president? Well, I can't tell you that, really. I mean, I know who it's going to you be. Give us a hand. Of course. I'll give you, we'll do another show sometime. Well, what about any of the people who Jesus you've run Christ. against? Would you- all right, I'm going to stop it there. And, there, and we're, we're going to play this a couple of times because the reason why is I want to have this You think they steam cleaned that stool after he got off of it? Oh, they threw it away. They burnt that son of a bitch. <laughs> they, they did not. They they bought that stool knowing he was going to sit on it and they would have to destroy it. You can burn it in a fire after right. it's just like, No, no, no. You can't burn it in a fire. You can't let the fumes out in the open. You got to put it in like a, like a fucking you a crematory a burn. Right. You can't. You no. Can't, it'll, it, the whole thing will end up smelling like Staten Island. The EPA would have to come in and do a fucking mass cleanup. It would be horrible. It would be horrible. Yeah. Right. It would be right. fucking horrible. It's like toxic waste dump, you know? But here's the here's the point I want to try to make is that in his answer, he obviously, like Trump does, doesn't have an answer. He wants to have an answer, but he doesn't want to have an answer. He wants to he get a new interview. Of, he's, he's so dementia addled. Seriously, I don't think any, he, if he wants to even think of names, they don't come to him. You know he I mean? definitely like he, knows. He definitely knows he wants to give a hit, but he's not going to give him a hit. Maybe we'll do another show. But here's the point that I, I want to make here is in this non-answer, he's actually answering. He's actually telling us that he's not going to pick a vice president. And I know I know a lot of people are going to really fucking they're going to be like, you're you're ridiculous, Tony. This is a ridiculous notion that he wouldn't pick or that he would even consider not picking someone, because even if he does, he's going to say out loud, he's going to say out loud. I don't need a vice president. The, my last one didn't do what I wanted. He threw the election to Joe Biden. And the last one, I had to send my minions to the Capitol to hang him. And that didn't even work. So why do I want a vice president? He's literally, he's going to say, Cliff, he's going to say it. He's going to say, why do I want a vice president? When people start Here's asking this, he's going to ask that. Here, so, yeah, the people, again, got this wrong about him. And I think me, the media did on purpose because they choose to be stupid as a profession. But again and again and again, which is people that are pathological narcissists and are patho and are sociopaths. He's some combination of a lot of really bad shit. Like get out your DSM, whatever you know, edition they're on now, and half the things you find in there for disorders he has. And people who are who are like are like that, they don't they don't see boundaries. That's why they're so dangerous. Like the boundaries, the rest of us respect. So when people are like, well, he wouldn't try to overthrow the election. Well, yes, he fucking will. He, he wouldn't steal top, top secrets. He would do that. He wouldn't leave NATO. You can bet your ass he would have left NATO if he could have found a way to get the Joint Chiefs and other people to sign on. I mean, there's nothing he wouldn't do that because as long as it benefits him, if it, if it, if it, if it gratifies him in the moment, he, he will do it. What, what, was the, what the hell was that? Go ahead with it again. <clears throat> Listen, we have we have we have a great sound effects in the laboratory here that uh, just pop up. I just up didn't every hear what it was. I enjoyed oh, yeah. it. So, so the, the, I don't think, he, but I, I I will throw out one exception. Yeah. To the to the I I actually agree with you because I don't think he's going to want anybody else around or whatever. But one exception to the Tony Michaels rule, mm -hmm. and I don't think this will happen because they won't agree to do it. Which is if he could get an actual real billionaire. He would do that because he's so fucking cheap that he wants to be able to put away as much of the money as he can um, that he brings in into his ventures. I think the one way he might do it is if some billionaire willing to join him and like, you know, a real billionaire and spend like, you know, 10 billion on the campaign or something. That to me, like a bribe, essentially. That to me is the only way I think he would he would have a vice president. Otherwise, I think he's not going to pick any conventional human as a vice president because he doesn't need a vice president he's him i think he'll stand on stage at the convention when he's voted in on the first ballot um unanimously and he stands there and he says i told you i was the only one that could fix it and because i'm the only one that fixes it i don't need why, a vice why president. do i need a vice president that's right and 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 he, he they want him to be a dictator they want a theocratic monarchy oh. that's what they want i'm going to show you a clip of it here and i hope you have time today i don't know how much time you got but i, I love the conversation that I, we're having i don't want to I actually, uh, you picked a good day. I have a ton great. of time. So great. Well, so let's 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 continue. Let's, continue let's let's continue this conversation. Then I have to check in, though. I have to check in in a couple minutes with Mike Johnson because he's been monitoring my porn, and I have to make sure I'm doing okay. Well, but then I'll come back. I I actually I actually have I actually have a um I actually have a clip. Because speaking of checking in, I want to check into someone who wants to be his vice presidential running mate. Possibly, um, this is a uh, Ramadama Ding Dong Beavis. Apparently, um, we have an image off his social media. This is his 
avatar from his social media account. This is, um, this is, and I, I don't know if this person is uh, actually running for president or he's running for president for Donald Trump. Um, but this is apparently Ramadama Beavis. You know, I'm stealing Ramadama that Beavis. From you. You, you need absolutely. to share that with me. Well, absolutely. Okay. Oh, it, it'll go around the internet. That's the great part about images here is they, they get created here and they get thrown around the internet. <clears throat> so let's get back. Let's get back to this uh, Donald Trump uh, town hall thing. And I want to, I want to play again, this uh, clip of him uh, at this. Uh, if, see if you can spot it, see if you can hear it. Uh, what he's saying about, I don't need a vice president. Listen, let me just ask you a follow up on that about who would be in your, in your cabinet and your administration. Mm -hmm. If you are the nominee, which I know you expect to be, who would be in the running for a vice president? Well, I can't tell you that really. I mean, I know who it's going to be. Give us a hint. I'll give you, we'll do another show sometime. Well, what and and I, I literally, I literally think he's thinking in his brain, I'm not going to have a vice president, dumbass. Like he's si sitting there thinking, what? Why does a, a, a someone who wants to have a theocratic monarchy, who wants to be a dick taster, I want to be a dick taster. I want to taste dick only for a day, just one day, Cliff. Why would he actually believe? Why would he believe in any part of his tiny little brain that he needs to have a vice president? And literally, people are going to be like, that is not a thing. You cannot run without a vice president. But he's not thinking that. And when they go to the nomination at the Republican National Convention and he looks at them and says, I'm not going to have a vice president. They're going to say, no, you have to. He's like, no, I'm not going to. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? They're not going to actually do it because I, 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 I want to set aside the jokes. This is a real thing that can actually happen, folks. And actually, I, I actually kind of want it to happen. If you want to know the honest truth, this is what I want. Donald yeah, Trump to be Donald happen. Trump. Yes. Um, but, you know, like I, I, and I have to admit knowledge of history, you know, but I don't remember how this all changed, but if you know your history, you know, originally they didn't have vice presidents and you would run and the person that got the second most electoral votes would be the vice president. So it would be sort of hilarious if that, if we went back, if, if, if Joe Biden, if he did win and Biden ended up becoming his vice president, well, that would be funny shit. It wouldn't be funny because he'd be president and we, that's this country and you know, that would destroy our country. But in that way, like that was the way we did it originally. So right. I don't know. If we change, if I don't remember if the law, somebody maybe can jump in the comments. I'm trying to remember if we, when that was changed, you know, that system. In any case, um, look, if there's a convention out there, you're dealing with a child, okay? You're dealing with somebody who has the, I believe, the sort of moral development of around a six year old. So if you if you think about it that way, if you're dealing with somebody whose instinct when you tell them to do something is to not do it, then what you need to do is you need to ask yourself, what are the things that nobody else would do? And those are things he would do. So what you're saying is completely plausible because A, yeah, why do I need somebody else? I'm everything. I'm, I'm the sun, you know, I'm, 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 you know, I, I'm the, I'm what everyone should be worshiping. So that makes sense. And I'm sure there's plenty of other conventions he'll break along the way too, because he, as he has already, because he's him, he's not, He's not a, a, somebody that understands rules and boundaries and traditions and anything like that. None of that matters to him. Well, let, let's let's go let's go to this to the rest of this clip because he does mention Chris Christie in it. See see if you spot that. Let me guess. So I bet he makes the fun people of who you've run against. Would you be open to mending fences with oh, any sure, of them? I will. I will. I've already started like Christie better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Christie for vice president? I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it. That would be an upset. Christie for vice president. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to announce. <laughs> see, there, there's the... I know, he thinks he's so... He, he's so not funny. Well, he here, here's he what I'll tell you. Here's what I tell you. Is that that is actually a sales tactic, what he does. I don't know if you, I don't know if you uh, have studied sales tactics and like uh, how salespeople uh, marketing, but not right. specifically sales. So, so sales tactics, when you're selling someone, um, you want to test the waters where you're at. And what you do is you, you, you soft blow it at the end with a joke, right? So right. What you, a joke, right? And you try, you try to lighten up what you're trying to get out of the person in front of you what you're because you're trying to gauge where they're at right in a sales and a negotiation you're actually trying to gauge where that person's at and where you're at and how you can get to the spot where you both agree um 
And he's kind of negotiating the room at this point. He's negotiating the room to see if they'll let him say it. Because there is going to be a room, I guarantee it, there is going to be a room where Donald Trump discovers that he can say that he can be a dictator for a day. Oh, wait, that already happened. That already happened. That already happened. And he's going to find a room where he can navigate that he's going to give this, I want to be a dictator for a day. And saying so, I don't need a vice president. He's going to work that room. He's going to find that space where he feels comfortable saying that crazy ass thing that no one else will say. And he's going to say it. And when he says it, it doesn't mean that it's actually going to happen, right? I mean, he still may end up picking a VP, but he is going to basically say, I don't want one. Well, uh, yeah, this point, he'll, he, I, I mean, he, he doesn't think he needs anything. So, I mean, of course, at some point, he'll float the idea that he's the almighty. And why would he need a vice president? I'm sure. Maybe Except he'll test it out the way you said. Uh, I'm just tweeting something here. Dictators don't need vice presidents. Uh, VPs. Let's do that. D- dictators don't need VP. They, there's not a vice dictator, I don't think. I don't think that's a position um, that is open in the United States of America. I'm not really sure. Maybe I'm, wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I want to go back to the white Christian nationalism thing real quick, because um, I think this is not getting enough attention. Um, and I played this clip over and over and over here. So um, it's going to be repetitive, but it needs to be on repeat. Uh, I'm actually surprised because there's a lot of clips from the, uh, the, the hearing yesterday, which I'd like to get your opinion on some of those as well. Um, but I'm surprised that the mainstream media absolutely does not know that this clip even exists. It's I, actually, I think they do because I think there's a few producers from MSNBC um, that actually watch this show. So I think they actually do know it exists. But they're really scared to play this like on a national network or on national stage. But as you know, the reason that we are in the trouble that we're in in this country is not because of Trump. Um, there is a disease that we have, and he is just a symptom of that disease. That is the that is what I, um, the idea and the message that I am carrying through this, because I believe that to be true. Yeah. So even if we get rid of Trump, it's not going to really get rid of the disease or, 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 or stop it from metastasizing, as it were, if you're talking and that kind of talk. Um, but I want to show you this. This is Laura Wentz uh, on her little show. But as we know for messaging, messaging cascades out, right? It's, uh, mm-hmm. I say to you on all the time, you throw a pebble in, in the pond and, and the ripples happen, and that's how messaging yep. happens. But here she and is. They, they have a very big pond on the right. And again, long before Trump, you know, they were already, the how the Tea Party wave happened and certain other things. They were lying about Obama's, you know, about Obamacare. Remember, it was always in negative numbers. And then when enough people started getting aspects of it, like they couldn't be kicked off of their health care and no pre-existing conditions, which could stop you from getting and all that. They're like, wait a minute, we like it. And it ended up rebounding and the Republicans lost in 2018 based on their threats to take away health care. So, you know, they've been their their propaganda puke funnel is honestly that is much more. You know, Trump is a symptom of that. I love the propaganda puke funnel. I, if we could get some uh, rat, can you get me um, uh, a proper image? Uh, maybe we can find a picture of this propaganda puke funnel. I, I'd like to see I, that. I mean, thank you. Think about it. Fox, Sinclair owning mm-hmm. local stations around the country, talk radio in most markets, you know, all of their shitty online properties that all have the name daily in it, right? Daily Wire, Daily Beacon, Daily Crap. I mean, you know, here, like, here is here is Daily Nazi. This is what I call oh. this. This is Daily Nazi um, with Laura Lentz. But listen to what they're saying. He is, but let's hear the beauty of what she has. To oh say. boy, it's it's a it's a whopper. Let's listen. He's been out of country it's anymore. It's time for a theocratic monarchy, King Trump for life. Let's go. Hey, I think if we had a monarchy, there'd be a lot less corruption because you can't be bought. You know, you don't have to be bought because you're always in control. You don't have to be paid for with campaign cash because you're always going to be in control and you're going to pass it on to your children and that kind of thing, especially if they do bloodlines. But very interesting stuff. Just just a suggestion. Doesn't sound too terrible. It's worked uh, throughout the majority of history and uh, King Jesus. Remember, our Lord believes in uh, the theocratic, uh, the monarchical structure. There it is. 
Now, who is that other asshole? The guy? I, I'm not. I'm not really sure. It, I, it, really it, it doesn't me. matter who these people it's, are. Really, it's worked throughout history, and they're correct. It is worked unless you count every fucking country. Right. Um, then it hasn't worked. Uh, it went really well in France, as we know. Great. I mean, it was awesome in England when every time, like, let's be like a monarch who's Protestant and would murder all the Catholics. A Catholic would come in and murder all the Protestants. We're not even getting into other parts of the oh, world. Oh, well, why? Hey, listen, listen, you're you're discounting that these white Christian nationalists don't want genocide. They want. Oh, and, oh I'm not discounting it. I know that, they, that's what they want. That's what is, they want. But, but eventually, as you know, well, they may have wanted that and they may have committed that in France. But guess whose heads ended up on the chopping block? Quite right. literally, right? Like it never lasts because eventually they turn on each other. It's like a very simple conversation. I always try to relay this to explain the Republican Party that I had with my kids when we were watching the star Wars movies and they were like, daddy, I don't get it. Why are the Siths attacking each other? They should be allies. And I'm like, see, you have to understand, you know, I'm like Dougie Luke. You understand when people are evil, they're loyal to nobody. They're not loyal to other evil people either. There's no such thing as an alliance except for a temporary one. And they will always turn on each other. That is the way. So all these, these monarchies that have worked so well, they were great until somebody, it worked great in Saudi Arabia, and then MBS came in and had everybody arrested and killed, probably on information he got from Jared Kushner, allegedly. Um, so, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, it worked oh, great. We, oh, we beg for cease and desist here. You don't have to, you don't have okay. to legal it up, you know? <laughs> it worked terrifically until they don't work, which is always. Because right. nobody comes well, I mean, in- well, wait, are you saying that Hitler didn't, after the Second World War, didn't um, retire to the beaches of Miami? Or is that, is that what you're saying? I, I, and it's not the way I remember it going oh, down. Okay. All right. Um, well, I, I thought I thought he was like, you know, this whole dictator thing, this whole Fuhrer and thing. And if you're really I'm attracted to lampposts, you know, Benito Mussolini ended up hanging from one when he was done with. So there's that. Uh, I mean, you know. <laughs> well, you saying- know, you know what's funny about Mussolini? Because... It, if you actually study um, fascist Europe in the nineteen late twenties, thirties, and forties, Trump actually is more of a Mussolini type figure, um, yeah. and because and because Mussolini really didn't believe uh, he didn't believe in his bones in fascism. It was just a, a tool for his power, right? Yeah, he had been a, he had actually been a unlike Hitler, he had actually really been a socialist, right? Initially, and had believed in that. You're absolutely right. It was a, a way of 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 using populism to, to get into power. Right. But, and, and, uh, and Hitler, Hitler though, believed it deep down in his fucking bones. Yeah, he was just a crazy fucker. Right. He believed it deep down yeah, in his bones. He was pissed. Put it this way. He was in the artistic community in Vienna. He made these paintings that were essentially dog shit. Like, I could sit here and spit on a piece of paper and be nicer than Hitler's paintings. So he couldn't sell any paintings, and there were a lot of Jews in the art industry. And so I'm still convinced that that's part of where all that came from. Is that is that classic? Like he decided he hated everybody because he was a shitty painter. Wait, you mean um, like you mean like there was a guy who ran for president who might have won, who went to a White House correspondence dinner, and a president at the time who was a scary black guy with a funny name made, yeah, made fun, fun of, of him? him. You think that's? Yeah. You think maybe I don't know. It sounds you know maybe I maybe I am a little and off. Maybe, maybe he is guy, more like Hitler than I think. Maybe he is, <laughs> yeah, and maybe that guy happened to be got happened to be a really really crappy businessman right and knew it deep down no matter what lies he told in in books and everywhere else that he took all the money he left to him by his dad and blew the whole thing away lost more money in one year than anybody else in the history you know he lost like almost a billion dollars in, in a year like 990 i mean i so maybe he realized i'm a moron and he needed that about who knows i mean look all these guys are are on some level you know they're they're so they're sociopaths or narcissists or whatever and all that crosses with you know various other personality traits so he could be part Mussolini part Idi Amin part Suharto part you know who the hell knows point is he's a dictator and a loser and a self-loathing idiot and a racist and he's bad at everything he's ever tried to do and that's why we're stuck with him Right. Well, um, speaking of going bankrupt and losing a bunch of money, today he's in court about to lose a shit ton of money. Apparently, it went from two hundred fifty million that the uh, AG's office is seeking 
to about 370. I understand they added a bunch of money on to Why was that? Was that? I mean, I'm glad they did it, but what was the just I think in the trial and stuff they discovered that it, uh, because Donald Trump is actually claiming I stole more money than what you're saying, okay? Then like, okay, all right, well then we're increasing. Does it really matter though cuz he doesn't actually have this money? And I was trying to explain that in the A block, but I got in the woods and I kind of got distracted. Um, because he doesn't actually have money as assets. Um, and he uses he uses the the controlling of assets to pretend he's rich. Um, it's what right. a lot of real estate people do. They aren't it really is an insult. Like, and again, I get why we have to have I've got a couple different companies. I get why we've got to have corporate shields and something you do in one company shouldn't affect another company and all that. I get there's reasons for some of those laws, but that people like him can flout you know, what they do personally, you know, and, and get away with it. And then they can go ahead and, and use the corporation like Mar-a-Lago, even though the place is a shithole filled with bed bugs and should be condemned, should have been ripped away from him a while ago. That like he can keep living like that in that crap hole. And does he still have like a Trump plane? You know, I don't know, but he probably does. Well, he, he does his, his, the reason why he does is because his MAGA actually gave him money to um, redo oh. his plane. Well, if they did that, then those dumb fucks, they, then right. they deserve it and, and fine. If it's because of the fact that he can hide, you know, the losses, the, the judgments against him, E. Jean Carroll and some of the other ones, that's what really pisses me off. These guys that can hide, there has to be a place where you can corp, I'm sorry, where you can burst the corporate sort of protection, the veil, they call it, and say, too bad, we're taking all of your shit. Well, I think they're going to take a lot of his shit because he doesn't, well, and other than in his diaper, he doesn't have a lot of shit to give. Um, but here this morning, this may or may not be real. I actually, I don't know if it's real or if it's AI, but I think it's real enough to show here on the show because this is apparently his statement he gave um, right outside the courthouse this morning before he's going to have to cough up about $300 million. Let's listen. I never cared for Melania's mama. I only wanted to use her as an excuse for my case, but may she have a piece of pie in the sky. I was dancing. Some people say I'm the best dancer in campaigning in Iowa, and I didn't respond to the judge on time. He granted me an additional three days, and we still didn't respond to him on time. Everyone knows I'm guilty, but I'm just going to use this opportunity to raise money from my cult. That's right. I have a cult the likes no one has ever seen. It's the greatest and dumbest cult in the world. <laughs> My club, Rocha Largo, is worth billions with a B. Some people are saying it's worth trillions because of me. Just vote for Joe Biden. <laughs> I, I think that's official statement. I think can that's ask, the official statement. You, is, that his, is that his new rap album? I, I think so. I, I'm not really sure, but it, it sounds you, right. It man, sounds like Trump. Man. Sounds like Trump to me. It sounds like Trump to me. So I don't know. Sure. Apparently, apparently um, uh, the news is out of the courtroom. Uh, speaking of the courtroom is uh, Chris Keiss, his attorney, who is the only attorney who will represent him throughout this entire process because he actually paid him in advance. Um, all the other attorneys, he doesn't like we know with Rudy Giuliani. Well, he never ends up paying anybody. If you ever 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 deliver a service or anything to donald trump for receiving payment wow you are fucking dumb well apparently his attorney chris keiss has asked for permission to speak uh the judge says quote do you promise to just comment on the facts and the law oh man number one promise Ooh, bitch that ain't yeah. gonna work that ain't gonna work promise you think donald also, trump does this guy have a law degree? like what level have we gotten to now does this guy have a law degree well, Chris Keiss, now, Chris yeah. Keiss, I, I'll, I'll admit, I, I've done a little bit um, of looking on lawyers, uh, uh, Trump's lawyers, and, and I discovered in this process that in this country, it actually is not that hard to become a lawyer, and it's not that impressive that you have your law degree. It is better if you are a good lawyer, but Chris Keiss is Did actually a good lawyer. He's actually a good lawyer. Good. And, I, and okay. I will I will say that Chris Keiss is a, the one indication that he is actually one of Donald Trump's better attorneys is because he got his money in advance. Um, but I, I actually believe that Chris Keiss has to make this request because Donald Trump wants to speak um, because oh, I mean, he never he shuts to, I mean, the fuck up. These guys have to do whatever Trump yells at them to do. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. they have to make whatever request he demands that they, that they make, no matter how stupid it is. Um, well, or he'll so, just fire them. So, So here's the thing. So here, and I'm reading transcripts here. I don't have audio of this yet. 
literally the judge asked the question, do you promise to just comment on the facts and the law? Trump starts talking immediately, immediately without agreeing to what the judge says. And Trump, um, I, I guess this is the, the quote. This was a, poli oh my God, what a fucking idiot. Like this is the guy that is going to decide how rich he can seem, right? Because Trump is not as rich as he portrays to be. But this oh is how, God. this guy is going close. to decide. This is got that guy that's going to, he's going to say this to the guy that is going to decide how rich he's going to be able to seem. Quote, this was a political witch hunt. This, maybe I should, this was a political witch hunt. We should receive damages for what they have taken our company through. <laughs> they have no documents. They have nothing. Quote. This is the only thing they have. Trump concedes uh, in a triplex, which was a mistake. He goes on to say, I am not sure the dollar amount would have been that far off. If you want to know, I am an innocent man. I have been politically persecuted. This statute is vicious. He goes on to talk, of course, because here's a really the thing about Donald Trump is Donald Trump has the right to remain silent. He does not have the fucking ability. He just doesn't. No, he can't. He's, he just he's, doesn't. He, he, the, the beauty of, of his big mouth is so many of these cases, he's made so much worse. Well, yeah. The fact that he can't shut up. And he thinks I mean, he's so much smarter than everyone else, and he's not. He goes on to say in this, I think this is going to be the the explanation on the 350 million or the 300 million, whatever it is, 300 million that the judge is going to make it order him to pay now to go to appeals and all that, but they'll have him in receivership. But here's the point. He says, quote, this is what Trump says. What has happened here is a fraud on me. The amount of taxes I have paid over this period is close to 300 million. They don't want me here anymore. I have a problem they want to make sure I don't run again. So it so literally the judge asked him, do you promise to just comments on the facts and the law? And Trump goes on to not say any facts or anything about the law. <laughs> what I don't get is they, they haven't learned, you know, by now that of course he won't. He doesn't understand facts and law is way beyond him. Why they don't just say, no, you can't talk. Because we know that you're just, it's just going to be verbal diarrhea and we're not interested. You know, uh, just like the way they haven't yet locked him up or at least put an ankle bracelet on him and put him in like, in a, you know, his house. So he can't leave that bed bug filled house of slime in, in, in Florida. Like, I don't, I don't get it, man. I mean, I do get it because you get away with so much more, A, if you're rich and B, if you were a former president. But it's r ridiculous the amount of stuff he's he the times he just ignores them and gets away with it, and any of the rest of us would be sitting in a prison cell. Well, and it's 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 because mainly um, his supporters kind of give him this bravado that he has, um, like here uh, yesterday in the town hall on on Fox News, um, he says this again. Because for fifty four years they were trying to get Roe v. Wade terminated, and I did it, and I'm proud to have done it. They wanted to get it back, right? You wouldn't be have that. There would be no question. Nobody else was going to get that done but that, me. Yeah. And we did it. And we did something that was a miracle. We did something that was a miracle. Was a he miracle. called it a miracle. A miracle. We wow. are seeing basically since that happened, the average Republican has lost seven points from their overall tally in elections based on that issue. The and he's, I mean, I, that, if that is going to be the best ad of all time. Well, here's the thing is even the Senate Republicans are bringing in uh, coordinated narrative and messaging groups to to try to un to try to undo the undo the, his shit. Pro, well, yeah. uh, well, undo the, the, the words pro-life. They do not want to be referred to as pro-life anymore because of the stigma and the stench that comes with it, with what they've done. And I want to I want to point out just just one more thing, because this is really yeah, important. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting in a state where where. Last year, in an off year, you know, we we passed abortion rights in a lean red state with what 56, 57 percent of the vote. Well, they just got it on the ballot in Florida for for this coming year, and I, the, 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 it's hilarious. We talk about with the Senate because it's not just Donald Trump, Rick Scott, that bald headed weirdo looking alien who I'm convinced was that character in Men in Black Three, where the little or two, where the little one things of him would fly around. 
this tall weirdo. You have to see the thing. You, you know who I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You see it. Uh, he looks like a fucking alien. I think we can all say that. Rick Scott has spent billions of the money he made from his alleged Medicare fraud, where he took the fifth like a hundred times when, when he was running a hospital group. And he, in three different races, has won. The most he ever won by was like 1.1%. There was one race where he won by 0.39 and another one where he won by like 0.8 something. He always barely wins. And maybe this will be the difference that takes that asshole out this time. So keep talking, Donnie, because it's going to be on the ballot. So keep saying how much you hate Roe versus Wade. Uh, and uh, Well, here's excellent. the thing. Brad points on Facebook. Prance, pr pr points on the I think you're talking about Skeletor. You said Rick Scott, but I think you meant Skeletor. Is that I meant Skeletor, yes. Oh, okay, good, good. I thought I thought it was the uh, the U.S. Senator in Florida known as Skeletor, not Rick Scott. I, I didn't know who you were talking about when you said Rick Scott. I, I make thought mistakes. Skeletor. I make right. mistakes sometimes. Well, so I does this you, guy. I'm wrong 75% of the time. Here, it, so does this. I want to listen to this clip again because he calls he calls the overturning of Roe v. Wade a miracle. Listen to it again. Because for 54 years, they were trying it's to not get 54. It's actually 49, but yeah. Terminated, and I did it. And I'm proud to have done it. She's they he's proud. He's proud. Back, right? You they, yeah. have that. There would be no question. Nobody else was going to get that done that, but me. Yeah. I'm and the only one that can fix it. We did it. And we did something that was a miracle. It was a miracle. It's a fucking miracle to think that scumbag Republicans, that fascist in this country, would want to strip away women's women's rights to health care and want to criminalize pregnancies and ban their privacy in doctor's offices. It's a miracle to think that that wanted yes. to happen. It's not a miracle. They've been saying it for a long time. They've desired this. They've wanted this so fucking bad. And they're not going to stop there they're not going to stop there they're going to oh, keep going control is next and they'll try to bring back the anti-sodomy laws so if you have oh the women's the women the, uh, i think in 2024 we're going to hear a lot about uh should women vote um uh, we're going to hear a lot we're about, hearing some of that yeah oh yeah the taylor swift stuff oh man the taylor swift stuff oh my god they it's freaking out huh? i mean i you know not my kind of music but my god i love her just because how much she pisses them off and and all the the registering folks to vote. I mean, and she's got a great positive message too. So I like her. She seems like a nice person just saying her music ain't my thing, but you know what? Keep preaching sister. Get out there. <laughs> well, you know, what's, you know what's voters. funny? You know, what's funny is like Taylor Swift and her fans and her fan base she literally does not say that much political stuff to them. Like she does not say that much no, political stuff. She doesn't and, have to. Right. She posted one. This is what really pisses them off more than anything else. It's what Jesse Waters was talking about the other day. Um, and they call it, they're calling it a psyop now that somehow she's, she's, she's somehow a psyop and it's a, it's a Pentagon. Well, here, let me, let me play the clip here real quick. This is from Jesse Waters. Listen. And such, you know, immeasurable amount of followers, she can potentially single-handedly swing voters because of just the amount of fo followers that she potentially oh, can influence. So the answer is yes, Jesse. Yeah, because when she posted the link to the vote.org, it's like hundreds of thousands of young Taylor Swift fans all of a sudden registered to vote. I oh my God, Cliff, can you imagine if she posts a link? Now, I, I, the reason why Jesse Waters is really pissed off here is because Jesse Waters could never post any link. I don't, even if it was the best porn on the planet, Nobody would post, go there. Well, I mean, he couldn't get, he might be able to get a thousand people to click on that link. He couldn't get tens of thousands of people to go register to Fox vote. News, if, if, if Fox News weren't, didn't have to go slumming for a new Bill O'Reilly when O'Reilly got kicked off for sexually harassing 847 women or whatever, you know, Waters would still be freaking bringing people coffee. I mean, he, he, he would have a show on no other network. He's not a talented broadcaster. He's an asshole who stuck around long enough and did exactly what Bill O'Reilly told him to do. So now he's got a show and nobody, he's never even one of the ones who's most talked about on that network. Nobody cares about him. He, he, he doesn't have talent. And frankly, he has to have some guy on his show named Jart who to talk to him. I mean, you see that guy's name? Who the yeah, fuck I, is named Jart? I, 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 I have no idea. I'm angry at that guy just for his name. I want to punch him. <laughs> well, speaking of talent, because uh, I want to, I want to, I want to pivot here uh, to some actual. You want to pivot from I want to punching somebody for their name? Yeah, that seems fair. That's no, good. no, I, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, I just, 
I don't really out of, want to. I'm any, running out of time. I'm running out of time. We got 12 minutes left, Glip. Yeah, we got I'm 12 shut minutes. Up. I'm just saying, you know, for those we got the 12 minutes out there. Pronounce my name joke. correctly. Just a joke. <laughs> We got we got 12 minutes left, so I want to pivot because what, what I want to talk to you about, uh, what happened yesterday, the, the best political theater that I've seen in a long time, uh, really, honestly, some of the best political theater that I've seen in history that was on, caught on film was yesterday when Hunter Biden's dick showed up at the oversight. Oh, excuse me, Hunter Biden, Hunter Biden. But Hunter Biden's dick did show well, up dick also. It did show up because yeah, it did. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. massaging it. I'm going to show you a clip about that, too. But I want to show you some of the talent that was on the floor and one that takes my breath away. She has my heart. Um, I you love her more than anything. Jasmine uh, Crockett. Oh, my God. Let me tell I you something. A lot of right. She's, oh. she is just what I love most is she doesn't follow. See, she ignores like they're supposed to have certain protocols about calling each other out. She doesn't give a shit. She goes directly at them and she insults them. And what I love even more is they fucking hate it because she's a black woman oh it my god that makes them. me love her even because more you know all these southern asshole white republicans who've never had a black woman talk to them like that before in the, when they're at home and, and they, they have to sit there I, and take it yes i love it I <laughs> okay love so it. so i i like when moskowitz and raskin and goldman do their thing in aoc i do too because but, all but, four of the people you just named are also minorities three jews right and like a latina Whose crap they usually don't have to take either. So it's actually whenever it's whenever it's a non-white Christian straight male, it's awesome because they just they they you know. But yes, most so on their sort of you know list of who they hate. Of course, black people are at the top, so right. it's even the worst. Yeah. Well, and Jasmine Crockett, she's originally from my home state of Missouri, from St. Louis, so she speaks my language which i love even more listen to this clip this is a great one this is outstanding are comprised of american citizens and the people that have entered pleas of guilty that will be flipping on your leader in a minute they are republicans i do want to point that out and half of them were republicans that were handpicked by donald trump himself so to be clear whatever happens to your little leader it's going to be because of the actions that he took. So you can talk all you want to about how January 6th was nonsense, but all of y'all were running at that time. Y'all were grabbing y'all's gas masks and y'all were running to your offices because you didn't know if they were coming to kill you. You should have cared that somebody was there to protect you, but instead you want to play games because you found out that it was your leader that decided that he wanted to propagate an insurrection on our country. So don't tell me that you care about the Constitution, because you don't. All you care about is Trump getting reelected, and I'll yield the last of my time to my leader. Thank you very much, Ms. Crockett, for your eloquent and powerful and irrefutable remarks. <laughs> Even Jamie Raskin's <laughs> like, I wish I could talk like that. I wish I, I could know. say it and like that. And he's actually I... really good, and yet right. still, she's on a, she's on a right. level that this is why I have hope, honestly, because I get the people on our side. We haven't built the big messaging apparatus they have. It pisses me off all the time, all the money they put in Fox News and all this stuff. And we don't. And in the past, we, we had, you know, and some of the older Democrats still have it, this decorum thing where they, you know, oh, don't say anything mean or whatever. But when I see Jasmine Crockett and I see Stacey Plaskett and I see Adam Schiff and I see, you know, uh, Jamie Raskin and Dan Goldman and I see, you know, I, like just we have Swalwell, like we do have this great group of sort of Gen X millennial uh, members of the House. There's fewer of them in the Senate. We need more of them who just are, have had it. Right. And they're like, we're, we, you know, we didn't grow up in a crouching position when Ronald Reagan was president. We don't still think they're the ones that are popular, more popular. We know all their positions are insane. We know they're losers. They're getting their asses kicked and we're done. And I love that people like that are now on these committees and speaking and just ripping. Because you said the other names, Jared Moskowitz was amazing yesterday too. You know, Dan Goldman was really good. Like, I'm so glad we have these people who are just like enough. You know, enough. well, we we need to have that um, because we got to go against the propaganda puke funnel, uh, which you'll see right here. We finally found images Ooh. here of the actual propaganda puke funnel. Here, um, here they are. Uh, so we'll, we'll get you these, well we'll get you these images here as well so that you can carry those around. All right. I want to, I want to go back um, really quick though, to uh, a video that I found on uh, Hunter Biden's dick. 
Now they were really, they're obsessed. They're obsessed with it. And Marjorie Taylor Greene is one of the ones, I think she has it as her phone home screen is his cock. Oh, like she I mean, loves his cock so much. It is what insane. happened. Like, wasn't the tantric gym rat guy good enough, or isn't the new I, like right wing, you know, loser reporter? You mean Brian you know? Glenn? I would imagine though Brian Glenn is not is not as um. I would imagine that she's generous with the peen she's not as Hunter. She's like, she's like, honey, have you started? She just doesn't really, you know, like it, right. it, it has no idea he's even there. Right. He probably the the guy in the uh, Bass Pro shop, the uh, the 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 fish tank uh, over the weekend. He probably makes Brian Glenn uh, look like a chickpea. But here, I I've got a video for all you here. She's obsessed breakdown. with Hunter Biden's penis. That's right. All. Well, she absolutely is. She even showed it. Here is them holding it up in the hearing yesterday. But uh, let's give a good analysis of what actually this did uh, in the discourse of things. So, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, once again, threw these pictures up in the committee again today. But they had to black, they blacked it out this time, dude. And look at, <laughs> they're just making Hunter Biden look like the cooler. Dude, this guy, look at the size of this black box right here. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Hunter Biden is fucking packing, bro. <laughs> dude, it's so funny that Marjorie Taylor Greene keeps fucking showing all these pictures in the committee, dude. What is he doing? Dude? They're just making this guy into a legend. <laughs> fucking Hunter Biden with a monster fucking dawn, bro. Oh my God. <laughs> just like we're putting off the American taxpayers flying around with a giant hug and his hookers. Fucking piece of shit. <laughs> fucking Biden crime family. <laughs> Biden crime family. But here's the thing. Who I don't know. That, dude? Do you uh, know that, that, that is that is Boston Smalls. That is Boston Smalls. But here's here's the thing. I'm a fan that, now. I'm a fan. Here's the thing is that sometimes, not all the time, not all the time, but sometimes guys, men will inherit how much endowment they have from their father. Okay. Now, if that's, I believe the that's case, what I learned in biology, yeah. Right. If that's the case, then our president of the United States is probably packing. He's probably hashtag big dick Joe. And I'm going to say that I, knowing this, knowing this information now, now that we have this all coming to light, and we have Marjorie Taylor Greene to thank for this, by the way. Yeah. We have her to think that we know that Joe Biden and Hunter Biden have huge, massive hogs, but huge, massive slungs, huge dicks. Now, if that's the case, then I want 2024. I want the 2024 general election, Cliff. I want it to be a dick measuring contest. I think we could subvert democracy. We could get rid of democracy. And what we could do is what Donald Trump really would like to do and have a dick measuring contest because I think Joe Biden would yeah, win that I, all day I, long. The thing is, I don't think he really would like to do it. Like everything else, he projects and he like acts tough. But when it comes right down to it, itty bitty weenie. <laughs> we, listen, we don't need to like see a picture. God help us, we better not. We, we have Stormy Daniels, who's described it as a mushroom. I mean, right. that that was her description was that it looked like Toad on Mario. So take that for what you will. Look, I just want to be dick taster for one day. And the dick I love the taste is Hunter Biden's because it's huge. Now, in all seriousness, this was real political theater. I only have a couple minutes left. But give me give me what you thought when you found out that Hunter Biden was going to walk into the room where Comer Pyle, who not, does not know what the fuck he's doing, has no clue, did not see this coming, and absolutely was going to rock his world when Hunter Biden showed up in the room when they were trying. And they did eventually vote on to take the contempt charges to the House floor to refer them to the DOJ, which I think it'll fail on the House floor. It'll make Comer pile. It'll make the Republican Party make Donald Trump even look more inept. And it'll yep. actually elevate Joe Biden. So I'm glad that they're doing it. I'm glad that Hunter Biden showed up, but it was some of the best theater. Tell me what you thought about it. I mean, you kind of described it. I mean, again, this is been a trait, whether it's the viral moment from a Jasmine Crockett ripping the crap out of them like that, whether it's a, a viral moment of Hunter Biden being like, I'm not going to let you control the narrative. You're a bunch of, you're a, a, such a bunch of goddamn wimps 
you sit there and you demand that I testify here, there, everywhere. Then I say, I'm going to do it in public and you hide under your desks. So I'm going to show up and you can just see the looks of terror on their faces because they're pathetic little crybabies. And so, you know, Comer acts like this tough guy. and He's just, he's this little puss. So you know what? I'm, I'm actually really, really glad he did it because and Democrats need to learn from that, from all of these things you've been showing today. Bring us more of those moments. Because again, when you're up against fake bravado, these cowardly, bone spurred little, you know, pooping their pants wimps, show them, show the world who they are. That is who they are. That's why they cling to their guns so tightly, because they're scared of the entire world. You know, uh, I mean, show the world who they are. And that's what Hunter Biden did. It was freaking brilliant. Masterful. And that's one thing that I think they have underestimated Hunter Biden. Not only is he a lawyer, but he's not dumb. He does a lot of coke. He loves hookers. He loves to have sex. He's done things. And in one night. Than they do. Right, right, right. Any of us. He's got a huge hog. And really, he's done more stuff in one night, I'm supposing, than some people would do in a lifetime. And they totally underestimate him when he's doing that. Uh, Cliff, tell us where the audience can find you. Tell us where they can find your hog, or maybe not. Just tell us where they can find I you. I haven't yet gotten to the point where I will, I will show my hog on YouTube. Oh, okay. I don't know if it's so you a don't, banning So you don't offense. have an OnlyFans. You just have a YouTube. Okay, well. Exactly. I don't know if that's a banning offense or not. Maybe, <laughs> if I, maybe for private members, you can show your hog. I'm not sure how it all works yet. I'll, okay. I'll sort of figure it out. Okay. But all right. you want to just come and see the videos that I do that make fun of Republicans. We did one on Taylor Swift and how it emasculated all of the Republicans, for example, like what we were talking about today. We did one on a big one that that went kind of viral. That was you a discussion you and I had on this show yeah. about uh, about uh, Donald Trump poopy pants. So uh, you can find me. It's just very simple at C Schechter uh, on YouTube. That is the one I care about the most because that's the platform I'm trying to grow. If you otherwise, you can find me at Threads at Cliff D Schechter or on Twitter at Cliff Schechter. But at C Schechter on YouTube, that's the place to go. Subscribe, notify, turn on notifications, and let's rock it. The link is down in the bio, so go follow, go subscribe to Cliff's channel on YouTube right now. Go subscribe. The mods will put it into the chats as well. Come to YouTube, subscribe. It's in the it's in the description below. Cliff, it's been a great. I'm, I'm glad you stuck around for to the end of the show, dude. I just but, always assume you're gonna get like at some point realize like why do I still have this asshole on and kick me off? Yeah, but, well, if it's if it's uh, good I'll... talk and we're going back and forth and there's good flow and I feel like we're going good, then we're doing good and we're gonna do the same thing tomorrow as we do every single weekday, Monday through Friday, noon Eastern, eleven Central, nine Pacific, on YouTube, the Books of Face, Twitch, and the Instagrammies. Same time, same place tomorrow. I promise I'll be here. You be here. We'll all be here. Surf's up, motherfuckers.